Okay, this morning, we're going to be learning what is titled The Blessed Man. Can you say that? The man. Can you say it again? The blessed, man. the blessed man. I want you to talk, talk to yourself and say, I am blessed. I am blessed. And I am a blessing. Okay, so I'm going to start with a question. If you hear that word, the blessed man, if you look at a person and you say that person is blessed, what are some things that you would see in the life of the person that will bring you to that conclusion to say, ah, this man is blessed, that woman is blessed? Okay, this is teaching this morning. Oh, yeah, let's start, brother. Sam, yes. <laughs> Give him Michael. He's going to be a pastor very soon. <laughs> and also, he said in Deuteronomy 28 as well, if I bless you, your fourth generations will also receive that blessing as well. Wow. And he gave an example, I think Abraham as well. So if someone is blessed by God, people, anything around them flourishes. Anything around them kind of taps into, there's a synergy, if I'm to put it that way. So that's how you know someone is blessed. Please clap for brother Sam. Ah. It says the blessed person, the blessed man, the blessing is transferable. You can see everything around him flourishing. Beautiful. Oh yeah, brother Emeka. What do you see in somebody and say, ah, this man is blessed by God? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's just as you have said it, everything around the person is flourishing. Whatever the person do or embark on doing. There's always uh, a success, even when people have tried it before and didn't make it. For some reason, if the person goes into it, the person is always successful. Successful. I like that word. Flourishing. Successful. <laughs> These people are preaching my message this morning. Oh, yeah. Fire on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, for me, a typical example of someone that's blessed in the Bible is uh, Abraham and um, King Solomon. Wow. Yeah. So, like, God blessed them and even it extended to... His generations as well. So that's why I understand that song. Transferable blessings. Generational impact. I love these guys. Though. In fact, the blessings doesn't just stay with them. It is transferable. Brameka said, if other people try that thing and it failed, when they try it, there's just something going to be different about it. Wow. The blessed man. Children, can you tell me something? Can you just look at somebody and say, mm, this person is blessed? Uh, what do you see? Well, why, do you, why would you say somebody is blessed? Yeah, give it to them. These are great, great ministers in the house. If somebody is blessed, you would know that the person has done great things. And anytime something tries to backfire, it never does. The enemy cannot penetrate the blessing of God. Hallelujah! <laughs> Woo! Did you hear that? The enemy cannot penetrate the blessing of God. Oh my goodness. Give it to Brother Delight. Any blessed human being is joyful. Joy. Wow. These people have the Holy Ghost. Though. They just <laughs> preach my... Oh my goodness. Okay, 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 okay. Let's go to Brother David. Like Lucky said, a blessed person is somebody who's nice to somebody. He's blessed. He's nice to somebody. He has virtues. Wow. Go ahead. When somebody's blessed, they're like sophisticated in something and they never back down when they're trying something. Hallelujah. They, 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 they are go-getters. They don't back down. They give it everything it takes. God bless you. Yeah. If someone is blessed, um, um, if someone is they can help people. They help. They help others. Thank you. Thank you. Let's stop there. Clap, clap your hands together for Jesus. You know what? You know what? You guys actually disappointed me because I thought you would say the person will have a big car, a big house, money, successful. But you didn't mention any of those things. You picked on issues that are important. 
Wow. You picked on things that are beyond physical, material things. You picked on things that are of eternal and generational impact. That's why I say you people have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and I pray that the grace of God, the oil of God, will increase in your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. That is actually the summary of the message this morning. That the blessed man is a man that is connected to God. It is far, far, far beyond material things. It is far, far, far beyond physical things. It is a life that is full of joy. Somebody mentioned that. Full of joy from the presence of God. Let's go to the book of Psalm 1. From verses 1 to 3. It says, blessed is that man. You know that this book of Psalm begins with that word, blessed. Psalm 1, the very first book of Psalm. 1 from verse 1. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Version, you know, to further explain. It says, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, favored by God is that man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. That is, he doesn't follow their advice. He doesn't follow their example. Nor stand in the path of sinners. Nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers. Scoffers are ridiculous. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he habitually meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted and fed by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. Whatever he does, he prospers. That thing comes to maturity. I pray for everybody here that that blessing that blessing that will single you out, the Lord will release upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That blessing that is transferable to generations. That blessing that goes beyond you and reaches out to so many. Ah, the Lord will release on everyone in the name of Jesus. Blessings here speaks about a joy, a deep contentment that comes from God himself. It comes from who? God himself. You know why? If we, are, if we limit blessings to cars, houses, all of those things, there are people that don't know God that have those things, right? They have it in abundance. They can lavish it anyhow. But you know that those people don't have that deep joy, that deep contentment, that deep satisfaction that somebody who is connected to God has. You discover that some of those people, they have all those beautiful things, those flashy things, they have those fame. But inwardly, they are empty. They don't have that satisfaction inside of them. They don't have that peace that comes from God. They don't have that real joy. They might have happiness. You might see them doing like this, oh, 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 you know, and they feel that ah, they are the um, happening guys. Everybody says, ah, this person is the happening guy. But deep down, if they open up to you, you discover that something is deeply wrong and missing. But who is this blessed man? is a man that has been found favored by God. It is a life that takes real pleasure in living according to God's will. That man, scripture says, he does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So the scripture talks about the company this person keeps. He does not keep company with those people that would take him away from God. He does not listen or take counsel from wicked people, 
from people that would turn, tell him to turn his back on God or turn his back on things that are of eternal value. This kind of blessing we are talking about is the one that comes from inside. Real satisfaction that only God can put inside of you and only a relationship with God can guarantee it. I pray for you again. I've prayed it. I will pray again. That God will give you that blessing. As, as young as you are and you are growing up, God will give you that blessing that cannot be quantified in monetary terms. Yeah. Hey, hey. The blessing I'm talking about is a blessing that you have that will command money to you. It will command greatness to you. It will command to you. In fact, you become a solution. You become so relevant to your generation that people need you. People need you. That is the kind of blessing your life will carry in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are not going to be ordinary. Yes, you are going to be unique. Why? Because blessed is that man he does not follow sinners to do evil. He does not take counsel from them. Okay? He does not sit with the scorners, the scornful, the people that ridicule the things of eternal value. The people that make jests of the work of God, of the things of God. You see them, they laugh. Oh, all these uh, people that are following God, they are just wasting their time. There are better things to do on Sunday. Why waste your time going to church? He doesn't find himself in those company. Instead, the Bible says, his delight, his delight, his desire, his joy is in what? The law of God. The thing that matters to him the most is the word of God. The thing that is of utmost importance, that takes number one place in his life, in her life, is the word of God. What did God say about me? What does God say about this situation? What does God say about this thing? The Bible says he meditates on that law day and night, habitually. Like, it's just part of you. Does it mean that you are going to sit down with your Bible 24-7 and not go to class? No. You will, you will go to class. You will go to work. You will do housework. You will do everything. But you know what? You read your Bible. And then what you read stays with you. It's inside of you. The law of God is inside. Your spirit is in your soul. Is in your mind. Is in every part of you. So that when you are walking on the way, the law is there. When you come across situation, the law of God is there. When somebody tells you to do something that is wrong, the law comes in and says, no, 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 it's against the law. You know what? Those of us that drive, no, in Winnipeg, there are so many laws, right? And why do you follow the law? You know there's a penalty, right? If you fail. So the law is part of you. If Auntie Rose is driving me sometimes, ah, this road is still. This road. <laughs> She's so conscious. Of that law. She doesn't need to sit down and say, where's the driving constitution of Manitoba? 24 7 No! It has become part of her. Okay? As she's driving on the road, she's not, uh, no, 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 this one is a one way, one way. No, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there was a day she said something, I was like, how did you even see it? Where did they write it on you? <laughs> but she's the one driving, so she, she's so, so she knows it, like she sees it. Her eyes are so observant because what? There is a penalty. Child of God, that is how the law of God should be inside of you. Yes. Before you take decisions. Oh, okay, what does the Bible say? Before you allow anything to take root in your heart. Before you allow any thoughts, any action, any reaction. 
What does the law say? That is what that scripture means. He meditates on it day and night. He's there as he's waking up in the morning. His heart, his desire, his delight is connected to God. He's not first thinking about soccer. Okay. Don't look at delight. Delight is not the only one that plays soccer. <laughs> He's not just thinking about Roblox. Thank you. When he wakes up first thing in the morning, it is not about ah, that Nolly movie, movie, movie. I have not finished watching it. <laughs> no. First thing in the morning, his heart, his desire is panting after God. Hey. And he begins to worship. He begins to worship. He begins to pray. He doesn't just jump up from his bed. Hey, I'm going. I'm, no, 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 no. He puts... God first. Children, are you learning? Your company, your friends, they are very important. As a child of God, you want to be blessed? You want to have that blessing that you can transfer to generations? Eh? You want to be relevant in life? You want people to come to you and say, ah, delight, how are you doing it? Please show us the way. Yes. Those your friends now, they might be laughing at you and say, Jesus, boy. Jesus, get everything about you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But sometime in life, they will come and say, ah, it's like this Jesus you are following you is the right way to follow. Because your life will be different. Your life will be unique. Your life will be governed by the law of God. Who is this blessed man? It's a man that desires God. He desires God. Where is your heart? What is that thing that occupies your thoughts daily? Is it one babe? Uh, should I look at this side? <laughs> what is that thing that fills your thoughts? What is that thing that consumes your will? Let it be God first. Yes. That's how to have a blessed life. That's how your life becomes he commands blessings, like he commands blessings. Things that other people are struggling for, they are, they are, you are just there. Those things are locating you easily. And you are like, God, thank you. See, God, God sees everybody. Are you hearing me? He sees our hearts. That is the first place he's looking at. He's looking at our hearts. How connected is a maker to me? How? I want to know. I want to know whether he's just following because he has to follow or he really loves me by himself. God wants to know that. God wants to know that. That's why he looks at your heart, Christian. Even though you're a little boy, God looks at your heart and says, wow, Christian loves me. Oh, this little child loves me. So when God sees that, God is like... Oh my God, I'm going to bless him. I'm going to give him a blessing that is generation we recognize. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Verse 3. Or oh, is it verse 4? It says, he is like a tree. He is like a tree. Let me look for that. Verse 3. Okay. Th that blessed man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Oh, yes. He's flourishing. Somebody said that. He's flourishing. He's flourishing. He's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It brings forth fruits in a season. His leaf will not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He's prospering. Things are opening up for him. It doesn't mean that his life is not having challenges. So challenges will come. You know what challenges are? Problems. They are just part of life. Yes. Some things that come to interfere. Eh, they are not supposed to be there, but they come to interfere. But that man is not moved. Ah. That man is not moved. Why? Because he knows he has a connection with God. He knows that God will show up for him. And so when he's even going through those tough times, when he's going through those tough situations, he's able to rejoice. And you tell him, is this person all right? How would you be passing through this kind of thing and still you are happy? How would you be going through all of this and still you are smiling? 
And the person says, you know what? I know whom I believe. I'm persuaded that he is able. He is able. He is more than able to handle every situation. So that man is blossoming. That man is producing fruit. Fruit of the spirit. He's producing love. He's producing joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, goodness, faithfulness, long-suffering, self-control. As he's producing those fruits, he's prospering. His soul is prospering. His relationship is prospering. His family is prospering. His pocket is also prospering. Because God is not just going to leave you like that. He's going to bring all those additions, you see? All those cars, all those houses, all those other things. Good wife, good marriage, good home. He's going to bring them. Those things will be additions to you. But first, make sure your heart is connected to him. God bless you. Make sure you love him truly. Love him genuinely. This one is not, uh, I'm doing it because of my mom. Or I'm doing it because of my dad. No. This one is me and him. My relationship with God, my heart desires him. That is the blessed life. A life that gives reverence to God. The Bible says blessed is the man who fears the Lord. He does not joke with the things of God. He does not take holy things lightly. He departs from evil. He departs from sin because he knows God does not like it. Wow, time is fast gone. That guy is kingdom minded, God minded. Psalm, the psalmist says in Psalm 73 25 to 26, says, Whom do I have in heaven but you? And on this earth, I desire nothing besides you. He said, my flesh, my heart may fail, but you know what? God is my strength and my portion forever, forever, forever. He says, even if my flesh is failing, what will make the flesh to fail? What will make your heart to fail? It's challenges now. Yeah, troubles, temptations, trials. Sometimes you ask yourself, ah, ah, as I'm serving God, why is all these things still happening to me? James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who endures temptations, who endures testing, who endures unpalatable situations. He said, for when he is tried, when he is tried, there is a reward when you overcome. There is a reward when you go through. There is a reward when you endure. Paul the Apostle says, what is that thing that is strong enough to separate us from the love of God? He said, is it trials? Is it temptation? Is it affliction? Is it beating? What is it that we, because we so love this God, like nothing is enough. Nothing is enough. Our heart is so connected to him. Yes, that is the blessed life I'm talking about. That is the man that is truly blessed. That is the woman that is truly blessed. That person that has a deep connection. A deep connection with God. The fact that you are going through trials does not undermine your blessing. Yeah, get it very strong. The, the fact that you're going through trials does not mean you are not blessed. No, you are still blessed. Keep your connection with God. Keep it strong. See, there's something that the apostles did. Let me see if I can find it. Let, let's go to Acts. I want us to read it. It's, 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 it's something that really shocks me when I read it. Acts chapter 5, verse 41. Acts chapter 5, verse 41. Okay, let's start from verse 40. Let's see what happened to them. It says, and to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, what did they do to them? They beat them and commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and they let them go. He said, and they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing. What were they doing? Rejoicing. That they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Hey, hey, 
You know, when I read it, I'm like, God, are those people really human beings? Like, I don't understand. They beat them because they were doing the work of God. They flocked them because they were obeying God. The, yet, the Bible says they rejoiced that we are counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Hmm. 